Yeah, I worry that, uh, you know, I just worry that that, he, that we were so emotionally uh, wounded by it. You know, it's so ironic to be watching Oslo right now. You know, you see people crying and, you know, in tears. The, the king and the queen in tears. And, and I know, I was in tears. I remember the, the second day, the day after we went back to work. I was, work, I was on Family Law, the show. And we went back to work. The studio was closed, obviously, that day. But the next day, we went back to work, 6 o'clock. And everybody was crying. Everybody was crying. And, uh, and so there was that emotional, uh, you know, just, I think that I remember thinking when, when I realized what was happening, because I'd worked late the night before, I realized, I, I remember thinking, gee, they, we really let them get us good. And I, I was just so angry about it. I wrote in my journal that I wanted to enlist and fight. I mean, oh, I was out of control, you know. Uh, um, it's too bad that, um, that, you know, we couldn't, uh, Keep a keep a grasp of that incredible spirit that we had. Right afterwards. Well, not right afterwards. Unfortunately, you know, in, in LA, we made a big sacrifice. You know, we put flags on our cars and stopped giving each other the finger for a couple of days. That was big in LA. But, 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 you know, that feeling that we were really all one people, that we were, you know, in it together, was really something. E pluribus unum. You know, I was yeah. I worked late, and I, I lived in a big house. I was a big TV star. You know, it's really weird. My kids were 13 and 8. Uh, my daughters, and uh, you know, I was living the life. I, America had been good to me, and then this happened, and somebody did it to America, and I, uh, it crushed me. I didn't know, I really wondered how I, how I would explain it to the girls, you know, how this world that we, we had such a wonderful world a minute ago, and now it was, it was different. Um, but I, I went, I worked late, and uh, I was in bed, and I, I kept hearing the phone ring. I'm thinking, geez, what the hell? Don't they know I worked late last night? I was very, you know, how dare they wake me? <laughs> and uh, finally, my wife came in and said, you better turn on the TV, you know? And then I saw what was going on, and, and I, I just, I mean, the shock, you know? I mean, and, and I know everybody's gonna say this, but the, the thought of, uh, the thought of the firemen and the cops running up the stairs, the, uh, you know, of course, the, the people in the buildings, the, uh, you know, I, I, got to, I got to New York um, eight days, eight days or seven days after it happened. And I put on my skates, I was a skater, I was a big inline skater. I put on my skates, I went down the West, West Side Highway, I was staying on the West Side, and I went down the West Side Highway and tried to get as close as I could to ground zero. Couldn't get too close, there was a lot of security, but more importantly, couldn't skate, there was so much debris. Um, it was a smell, and I'm telling you, I, I just can't, I can't, uh, I, I don't like revisiting how I felt. So I'm doing the Miss America contest, you know, it's big, it's America, it's this whole thing, and I was excited, I wanted to sing, there she is, Miss America. And my first job was with Burt Parks, too, my first job ever was with Burt Parks and a, and a pilot. But anyway, um, so I get the job, and, uh, and like I said, I was on Family Law, and um, and the, the, uh, it was scheduled for the weekend after, you know. And I got a call on the, on the 11th, in the, in, the, in the midst of that horrible day where everything stopped. Uh, I get a call from the Miss America pageant, and they say, uh, we're, gonna pay, we're gonna postpone or cancel the, the pageant this year. And I don't know why, but it just seemed like to me, like, here are these guys now who did this great thing, who planned this incredible thing and got us so well, got us so good. It reminded me of Don Dunphy when he would uh, announce a fight. He'd say, oh, that shot did him no good. It was that kind of feeling. We were like, oh, reeling. And then they were going to cancel the uh, Miss America pageant. There'd be a couple of guys, you know, in, in beards and drinking coffee going, see that? Not only did we take down the World Trade Center, but we got the Miss America pageant canceled. And I said, that's crazy. You can't do it can't do it, and I was very passionate about it. And, uh, and they said, ah, oh, you know, it's, I, said, I says, I think you're crazy, you gotta do it. You gotta do it, you can't go on. Not, but it, maybe it's disrespectful of, no, it's not disrespectful, it's, it's respectful, that's why you gotta do it. You can't let these guys disrupt our lives. <laughs> so, you know, I was really crazy, and they told me, okay, we're gonna send you over some material, maybe you could write something. So then I start writing, and I write this speech about, you know, we don't do it to make less of what happened, we do more to add our voice to, to, to the nation's resolve. You know, I write it pretty good, you know. As I was, well, let me tell you, I, I couldn't stop crying. I couldn't stop. 
And um, I was sitting there and I, I got stuck. I had the speech, I had half of the speech, and I couldn't, I didn't know what to do. And I felt a tremendous responsibility, by the way. It goes back and forth all day. You know, they're going to do it, they're not going to do it, they're going to do it. But all right, then it comes to write something, write something. I write something and then I'm stuck and I can't think of anything. And my son comes over, and I got an older son. He's 40 now. And uh, so he was 30 years old. He came over and he said, and he was very affected, like everybody else, extremely affected by it. And I showed him the speech, and he said, hey, it's really good, Dad. He said, uh, I said, I don't know, I'm stuck, I don't know what else to do. He says, Dad, you know, when's the last time you said the Pledge of Allegiance? And I said, gee, I don't remember the last time I said the Pledge of Allegiance. I used to say it in school, you know. Do we say it anymore? I don't even know if we say it, you know? They, I taught school last year, they didn't say it. I, you know, well, they say it every once in a while, but it's not like a, it's not like when we did in school, we got up every day and we said the pledge, okay. So I put that in the thing. I said, you know, this is what maybe this, oh, this is great. I wanted to kiss him on the lips, which I did, and then that was it. So I, I went to New York, I got to New York on, uh, on Wednesday. Uh, um, and now, like I said, it was devastating to go to New York. It's my home, it's where I come from, it's my life. It's, uh, so, um, I go and that's, and then, okay, so we, 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 we did a big dance number, which was huge. We, you know, had to do a dance number with girls from, well, <laughs> 50 states. It was quite, quite a, uh, quite a thing. I had some top dancers. We did a great number to, uh, all I need now is the girl, by the way. Um, but the, the big thing was I, I had to do this speech in the beginning of the show, and it was the Atlantic City uh, Convention Center. They were still doing it in Atlantic City. And um, it was packed, 14,000 people, and it was, there was a big orchestra, big stage, and then there was a runway that went out, and that's where you sang, when Miss America wins, you sing, there she is, Miss America. So I walk out onto the, uh, out onto the thing to do this speech, and it was terrifying. First of all, that I was gonna blow it. Second of all, that I might mess up the allegiance, the pledge. I was so afraid of messing up the pledge, you know? And, um, it's just for a half a second, but I was so full of emotion. I, I, I can't, it's hard to even talk about it because you, I, you, I don't think you can ever duplicate, and I don't want to ever duplicate how I felt. But I started to do the, the speech and I get through it and um, I start the pledge. I throw my hand on my chest and I say, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And I start to hear a weird sound. Bang, 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 bang. bang. Bang, 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 bang. And I stop for a second, but I keep going. I keep going, because first of all, I don't want to mess up the place. <laughs> but I don't know what the sound is. I, what is that sound? You know, they would, and by the way, you, you got to remember that there was so much security. There were dogs, there were guys running around. I mean, it was, well, who knows what it was? Well, what it was was the people jumping to their feet to say the pledge with me, and they had just refurbished the convention center and those seats were popping back, pop, 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 pop. But I, I was the wildest feeling of all time, you know. It was, uh, it was amazing. And then I, I remember it, I did a, I had like a little bit of a, a crack. I said, are you ready for, it was almost like Vince Scully when he does the John, the Dodger games and he tells the story about the old, the old days. And then he goes, let's get back to this one. I heard, wow, you ready for Miss America? And they went nuts. And I went nuts, because they were ready. And that's all I remember. I don't remember who won. I don't remember. No, I do remember. I just looked at it. <laughs> Katie Harmon, that's right, yeah. No, uh, David, I mean, it was, uh, I think about those, uh, I, I, you know, I'm really glad that that, I want to say, I'm glad that bearded cocksucker isn't around to see the 10th anniversary. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I just want you to know, I am glad that he's, I would thank the president that this guy's not around anymore because it used to bother me that this creep was having tea and thinking about this. I, and yeah, well, I said that's, that's, that's the, uh, you know, that's the hypocrisy of this whole thing. You know, it really is. I'm sorry. I don't get it. And, and uh, it's, like I said, it's so ironic that we're doing this on the heels of what just happened in, in Norway and watching them go through the same, and like I said, even though it's not the same scope, that national sort of mourning that's going on is so clearly exactly what happened here.
You know, I was watching myself because, you know, you, that's the thing about this 24-hour uh, news cycle. You watch disasters happen. If there's a tsunami, we see it now. You know, if we saw the towers come down. And we're going to, unfortunately, we're going to see it a lot. This probably this, uh, you're going to be so careful because, like I said, I think the more you commemorate it, and we shouldn't forget it. Please don't forget it. But I don't want to give them guys any more power than they already did. They had it. See, that's what's so hard about it talking about this is that you never feel like you did it justice. You never feel like you were able to convey, you know, how you felt and how you want people to understand how you felt. Um, that's why it's so much easier to not do anything like this. But this is the kind of thing that, uh, I mean, it, it, it's like our Kennedy assassination, our generation's Kennedy assassination. I remember the real problem I had was how was I going to explain this to my girls? How was I going to explain this to my little girls that they lived in a world that this could happen? And I never, and I, you know, I, I'll be honest with you, you know, I, I keep a journal. I've been keeping a journal since uh, 94. I write a page a day. And I was just checking it out. For the next week, all I'm worried about is that somebody's going to wear a bomb in the Third Street Promenade or, you know, or, or the Grove or something like that and really bring it home for us. Because it's one thing for the girls to see it on TV. It's another thing for it to be here or, where, or wherever we are. And it was just, that's the thing, I just worry about the kids. It was emotional, it was so emotional. And we had a guy who, whether you like President Bush or not, was emotional about it. He wasn't able to say to us, okay, we're gonna take care of this, relax, you know, don't get crazy, now methodically, bum, 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 bum. We had to think to do it, we could do it. But instead it became a, a, a I almost said crusade, which scared me. But instead of it being a sort of non-emotional response, which is what we need, which what leadership is supposed to, supposed to, you know, come up with, we had an emotional response. It sort of, it sort of f uh, fueled our frenzy, you know, uh, and fear, and fear. I mean, that's you know, that, that's another thing. I mean, look. I don't mind, uh, I think, I'm not saying we shouldn't remember this, but if this becomes a way to garner ratings, if it becomes a way to, uh, you know, you know what I mean, to, 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 to garner circulation or, or, or listening or listeners, or, then it's not about what it's supposed to be about. And that's what worries me too about doing it here this stuff.